Three years ago, the U.S. women were golden at the Worlds. The world then gathered in Beijing. The team took a misstep and had to be consoled with a silver medal. Alicia Sacramoni has stayed with the dream as London looms in 2012. The next step there is here in Rotterdam. New faces have joined her mission. And today, four events and everything counts at the World Championships. NBC Sports presents the 2010 World Gymnastics Championships from the Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Today, it's the women's team final. Hi, everybody. I'm Al Troutwig, along with Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett and Elfie Schlegel. This is a big gymnastics weekend for us on NBC. Today, the women's team final. Tomorrow, the women's all-around and highlights of the men's team and men's all-around world championships. This event, this women's team final, is a test of team depth. There are four rotations, as always, three gymnasts per nation, and all scores count. So mistakes are a very big deal. Let's start with the Americans, Tim Daggett. What do they expect? Well, they're very good. They're not dominant, but they're good. And they're really Really going to be led today by Rebecca Bra. She is just a, a workhorse and really is dominant on all of the events that she's going to perform on. But the one thing that I'm so surprised about, you know, they got a, a good amount of veterans and some young kids too. I'm surprised they put up Maddie Larson on floor exercise because in the qualifying round, she actually stumbled. It's a full point when you make a fall in gymnastics now. And I'm really surprised Marta Caroli decided to go with her. All right, now those scores don't carry over. It's a clean slate for everybody in a rich international field. Where would you like to begin, Elfie? Uh, Russia. And it's because of Alexander Alexandrov, who has returned to Russia. What he's trying to do is inject that tradition and passion that we remember back in the day with those Russian gymnasts when they won almost everything. And, you know, they have a star, a 16-year-old. Her name is Aliyah Mustafina. She just happens to be leading the women's field at the same time. And finally, uh, Tim, the Chinese. They won gold in Beijing. Now now they're two years removed from that. What do they look like? Well, you know, in, chi in Beijing, China, remember, a lot of people were saying they were too young. And ironically, they look a little old <laughs> here at, at these championships. They look a little beat up and certainly not at the level that they were in 2008. Okay, it's time for the competition. Let's begin with the first rotation. The American women's first rotation will come on the uneven bars. Warm-ups underway for the reigning world all-around champion Bridget Sloan and their Rebecca Bross of Plano, Texas. We'll see them in a moment. Meanwhile, on the vault, our first look at the Russians, and this is Ekaterina Kurbatova. She is 18. She was with this Russian team at the Europeans, but this is now a, a level higher than that. Well, and they have done wonders with this athlete because last year at the World Championships in 2009, I certainly could not believe that she would have gone on beyond those championships. And here she is. You know, a good vault, not a great vault, but certainly pretty darn good. You know, the amazing thing about this Russian team, and a lot of people at home are going to be mad at me for saying this, but if they hit today and everybody else hits, Russia wins. Well, one thing we found out in this sport, coaches matter. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah, Alexandrov was in the United States for about 15 years, and he got the call to come back. And Russia has been on First just a path to success. And the other two vaulters that are planning to go for Team Russia have more difficult vaults than this one. Very strong on this event. Rotterdam, not a huge city, a little over 600,000. Second largest in Holland to Amsterdam. And it's where Aliyah Mustafina of Russia finds herself. The Russian making her world championship debut. And apparently she's a lot to handle. The coach says she's very talented, but with a difficult character. However, you don't find much complacency among champions. What does he mean? <laughs> well, she's very fiery, and she's also extremely emotional. When things aren't going her way, the tears come out, and she takes a lot of work to get back into the gym. But this is a huge ball for her. Says that she doesn't like to make mistakes, and believe me, that is one hot vault. Wow, this is huge because this vault actually starts seven tenths higher than 99% of the vaults that we're going to see in the competition today. And the thing Russia's got going for them, they don't just have this one from 
They've got two of two. them. So they're going to be the leaders as long as they land on their feet after round one. Huge advantage for this team. Look at how clean, how high, how precise. She can actually stick that vault. It's amazing. And her score is what feels right now to be a pretty large one. 15.633 for Mustafina. And you know, that's a higher score than the first day of competition. And now from Pittsburgh, Indiana, a national champion, Bridget Sloan. She's one of the veterans on this team. Not just a national champion. She's the reigning world all-around champion. She will not repeat. She only did a couple of events in the qualifying round, which places you forward into the all-around competition. You know, and Bridget's not at her full strength. She's been feeling, well, she's had injuries. And coming into this World Championships, I mean, she's been trying to get stronger and stronger with each and every day. This is where they felt that she could good. contribute. That combination, very tricky. Next gymnast on the floor for Italy, Oh, and that, that was a little bit of a... She kind of missed her toes on the bar, had to repeat the element. Which makes the routine just a little bit longer. Double layout, dismount. Well, a solid set, a solid set, but that little hiccup there, that's gonna cost a couple of tenths. Remember, this is a team world championship, four apparatus as always. Three gymnasts per team, and all three scores count. So much pressure on these athletes. Every single routine, as you said, Al, counts. No mistakes. Anything can happen. It can change the entire makeup of the competition with one mistake. Yeah, really. With a full point off for a fall, it's just, it's devastating. Nice double laid out somersault, but doesn't stick that landing. That small hop forward, that is just one-tenth of a point. Yeah, certainly not Bridget's best. Team USA has already absorbed Mackenzie Coquato's 14.6, so there's Bridget Sloan's 14.566 for an all-around total of 29-plus. And in gymnastics, the way they got it set up is you are always pushing the envelope you're supposed to build one after another. Each score should be higher. And this one will be. She was just slightly under 15 in the first day of the team competition. But what makes, what makes Rebecca so special on this event, and it wasn't always her best, is she attacks the event. She is certainly not afraid of putting in a very difficult routine. Coach. Valeria Lucan says that she is all work. Well, she never stops. You ask her after every competition, there's always something to work on in her mind. Look at that release. And the second one is better. And they're all done in combination, which gives her more points. Nothing is wasted in this exercise. Everything like that skill connected into a beautiful pack salto to the low bar. Just big gymnastics, very exciting. Looking for a stick here. She has stuck them all week long. Oh, oh. she's gonna get an earful. <laughs> that was a, a fabulous routine, but oh, that, and that dismount is so easy for her. It's always one of the highlights. We always gripe about giving away those easy tents on landings, and she's one athlete that really takes it very seriously. You rarely see her miss. What she does so well, see that? She does this turn, it's called a pirouette, and she lands directly in the handstand. And a lot of gymnasts, you just don't see that, and they can incur three, even five tenths of a point for finishing after the handstand position. Do you think Valeria Luke and her coach believe she could have fought through that step on the landing? Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's sometimes you're trying to stick so hard that you, you know, you're sticking before you're landing. You gotta land and then stick. And she'll be the first one to bring it up with him. She'll be angry. And now, a few moments ago, Nabieva of Russia, Tayana Nabieva, only 15, 
And this is not pretty. You know, there's a lot of form going on, but it is that 6.5 difficulty rating. You see the bent knees, a little bit of bent hips. But the other side of that scoring is the 10.0, and the maximum she could score on there is a 16.5. So the Americans stumbling a little bit on uneven bars. Rebecca Bross gets only a 14.833. The Russians having their way on the vault as we continue at the 2010 World Gymnastics Championships. Second half of rotation one in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And it's our first look at what China and Romania has to offer. We've seen what the United States and the Russians have been up to. And we'll start things off with Jiang Yu Yuan. And she actually was a member of that gold medal winning team in Beijing. And she lit up that arena, she didn't did. she, Tim? Yeah, she really that did. That smile was infectious. She was one of the favorites. So remember, we saw those Russians that had that maximum score of 16. Point five. This vault right here has a maximum score of 15.8. Very nice. It's amazing what the Chinese did. They set everything up so that as a country they could peak athletically for Beijing. And in women's gymnastics, they did all of that. Yeah, it was remarkable how dominant they were, not just on the women's side, but even more so on the men's side. But beautiful form on this. A lot of times you see him coming off the table right here and it gets a little bit sloppy, but very nice. And she lands with her chest in a good position. You don't want to be too bent over. If you do, that brings more deductions. And of course, this is one of the vaults that we'll see so many of in this competition. What will set them apart is the height, the distance away from the vault, the cleanliness in the air. Go higher, be bigger, and stick the landing. She is going to incur one-tenth of a point deduction because she, of where she landed. You, so, you see there's all those lines on the mat that you got to stay inside right on that center line. A little chilly. Yeah, I was going to say. The Hoy Arena. She gets a 14.9. And the Chinese now begin to compile their total to keep up with what the United States and the Russians have already done. And now this is Huang Kishuang. A bright new face, really beautiful gymnastics. Has never been to a world championship before. And great height. But she had the hop. And she landed, I believe, all the way to the left of that center line and it's where you land it's not it's not where you step so if you land with your feet on either side of the line you're fine and yes that is one tenth of a point deduction if she were to, to the farther line she would have incurred even more I was going to say that had the great potential with the height but it of was being a, a really great fault, but the form was off. A little sloppy, yeah. It's unbelievable, isn't it? The hours and days and months and years of preparation and... Then you get one. It goes by in four <laughs> seconds. Yeah. One vault. Seems so cruel. Yeah. Well, remember Anya Hatch, her Olympic Games? Yep. One vault. One vault. For the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting to score. Meanwhile, on the uneven bars, the Romanians get set. And starting things off for them is going to be Anna Porgras. Now, a lot like Russian gymnastics, the Romanians have gone back to the coaches that made them a power, haven't they? It's unbelievable. Octavian Bellu and Mariana Bitang have come out of retirement and are now the two head coaches. They are not on the floor here. Bellu is in the arena somewhere. But already we're seeing their influence their biggest criticism of the last regime is they said when when we got to the training camp everybody was in a cast mm. so and he's 
says they are finally healthy at this point and now the preparation can begin. Well, and Bellu told his athletes to simply just compete with themselves at this competition. This is the starting point to 2012. And she, this, Anna, she is really their future. She's a tremendous talent. And where, where she's so good is on the uneven bars is where Romania is really so bad. They have struggled historically on the uneven bars and she actually competes with the best of the world on this event. Of course, we got to watch her last year at the World Championships, where we immediately said, wow, okay, they've they've got a great athlete here in, in Anna. She is definitely special, has some great qualities of being great. Now, Tim, in this coverage, they are very fixated on what goes on with the hands on the high <laughs> bar. What should viewers be looking for? Well, really, um, not a lot. I mean, on a release skill, yes, it's, it's critical. The Romanians are, are unique in that they don't wear grips. A lot of the other countries, most of the other countries, are wearing these big grips and they've got these, you know, large pieces of leather. They just wear like a, a gauze on their hands, so it's not as critical for them. It's shocking, isn't it? Piece of gauze. 14.466. That gets a smile from her. Representing <laughs> Romania at the Olympics in Beijing is our next competitor, Gabriela Dragoi. And really, I think they are kind of trying to bury this score. I mean, I think she's the second best gymnast, but Horas is certainly superior on this event. Gabriella only scored in the low 13s. Now we've said in the past with the new scoring system, a 15 is considered a great score, and that's certainly the type of score that you would want to see at a world championship. Big leg separation right there. What the Romanians have been criticized about on uneven bars is they, they don't have the flight on the release elements. Their pirouettes aren't landing in handstands. But this actually, beyond that, leg separation was a pretty darn good routine. They are fighters. Sandra, hi. There's a shot of Sandra Isbasha, the Olympic champion on floor exercise. She is back. Tim and Elfie, I love how in the public address they thank the gymnast yeah. after the routine is done. Sometimes in a different language, too, in the country language. Yeah, you see what I was talking about there, Al? They're, they're not grips. They're like, I don't, know, I don't know why they do it. You know, I thought Bellu said something very interesting about his team coming into these world championships, how he really only had a very short time to prepare this team. They were third at this year's European Championships. That was behind Russia and Great Britain, which was shocking. And he said he just wants these girls to leave Rotterdam feeling satisfied with what they did. And healthy. He said, that, he said I want them to leave healthy. He said this is not about 2010 because there just was not enough time. We are looking towards 2012. And believe me, the Romanians will be ready. <laughs> A low 14.066 for Gabriela Dragoi of Romania. And you may not know what, what exactly is on their hands and wrists, but it's not high tech. No, it is not. I like it, but... Now back to the Chinese, Yang Yilin. She also was one of one of four of the athletes on the team now or part of that Beijing team. Nice job, and she has really done much better this year. She had a brutal year last year. It just, uh, you know, she's grown and things have gotten so much more difficult for her. But her day is done. Yeah. This was the only event they were planning to use her on. That's going to bring us to the end of the first rotation. Yang Yi Lin of 14.9 will tally up the scores and see who stands where at the World Championships.
the port city of Rotterdam, the host of the 2010 Gymnastics World Championships. The event we're watching is the women's team final. We're one quarter of the way through, and here's where they stand. Russia is in first with a fairly significant lead over China, and then about six-tenths over the United States, and then there's a real separation between the U.S. and Romania. First gymnast for Romania, and the second rotation is Sandra Izbasa. And you know, she had that great Olympic Games, winning the gold on floor, but 2009 was not pretty for her. She tore her Achilles tendon and was out for about a year. A lot of people thought she wouldn't come back. Hey, if only you saw her shadow, you would think you were looking at the shadow of Nancy Lucan. Mm. Yeah, it's true. She's quite blonde at this competition. <laughs> What do you mean by that, Elfie? <laughs> Sandra said that this competition represents everything about the team, and she has no desire to do anything as an individual, but interestingly, she has qualified in third behind two Russians on balance beam. I think I read somewhere she said that I won't win a medal here. It's not a good way to start. Yeah. But I tell you, that injury uh, at her age and her body style, she has done a fabulous job to be in the condition that she is. Tim, she just returned in September of this year at a World Cup event. Here she is at Worlds. But this is experience. This is what the Romanians were looking for. Landing a triple full. And that, wow, that was very... Uh, very questionable, that dismount. Trying to do a triple twist, and if you do not complete the twist, what they do is they take it away and they devalue it to a two and a half, which isn't, you know, tragic, but I would say that she is going to lose this dismount. Let's see where she lands, and she is definitely not all the way around. You know, Tim and Elfie, I think it's good to remind everybody once in a while that all the judges do is take away. They don't add anything. There's a start value of all the skills that are given a point. That's the highest score you could possibly get, and then they chip away at that. Yeah, they do. That's the pen to paper, you know, and it's just chipping away, like you said. But a very good routine. Very good routine. She's a very elegant gymnast, isn't yes, she? Yes, very. 14.333. And now the uh, Chinese women are on the uneven bars. They can be spectacular. Wang Kui Shuang. They have been yeah. extremely spectacular. This is where they can just, you know. Distance themselves. Yeah, in a big way. Yeah. Like Russia did on vault. They can do on bars, but even more. Lots of intricate pirouetting skills you'll see over and over. Oh, a little funky there. Sometimes you think that it's just all about the high bar. They do have to at some point make their way down to the low bar. And a release right here. Nicely done. Some of those handstands though were not great. I think wow. she smacked her heels on the ground. It's that, hard to tell. Wow. Big, big deduction. Well, it's not supposed to go like that. You know, China on bars. You know, they worried about this young lady, thinking that she had so little international experience and that inconsistency was one of the things that uh, would plague her. But, oh. A lot of gymnastics in there. A little opening for Russia to increase their lead. A little opening for the United States to maybe catch China. You can't really see but just, from that shot. Yeah, muscling up that kip there. You have to think that she hit her feet. Really changed the whole momentum for her. Kind of a shocking error, <laughs> to be honest. It, it didn't happen 
It, ha it happened because of the transition from the high to the low. It's called a pack salto. But there was no problem with this. Now, if we couldn't tell on the replay, what do the judges do to tell if her foot touched the floor? Well, they, they have a, a different view than we do. They actually have video review, and that is what Nellie Kim, who is the president of the technical committee, it looks like she's doing. They, every routine is videotaped on the floor. Well, it's one of those long waits for the score as we go back to the Romanians on the beam and a progress. And whereas the Romanians are historically not great on bars, they are without question the most rock solid balance beam workers. Watch this, beautiful. And she has such a beautiful elegance about her in this routine. This is an athlete that just really seems to balance the artistry and the acrobatic skills so well. That was close. Yeah. <laughs> well, all these girls for so many years know this is where Nadia did her thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And you can hear her teammates on yeah. the floor just yapping away. <laughs> but they he she hears that every day because they all train together. Sure yeah. Well, you know, she did have that one wobble. Look at this, though. Beautiful punch into a double pike. Step backwards, but a very, very solid routine. She got so much height on the dismount. 15.066. That's a good score. That's a big number. And uh, we do the... Well, they were sort of nice to her, 14.75. Yeah, initially the score came in at 14.3. And, and meanwhile, Hekka Sheen is underway on the uneven bars, her teammate. The Reigning Olymp Olympic champion. Watch yeah, that. Wow. Everybody shakes their head just a little after, after that combination. Do another big release oh. in combination. A little bit shy on that last handstand. Got to land dead in that handstand position. Are you in pro deductions? Everybody's vocal today. Yep. It's amazing how strong she's remained since Beijing oh, for this event. Remember how loud the arena was that day? Oh, golly. Yeah, that was a, a big routine, by far the highest start value, and going to really help China's efforts here. She scored a 16.066 in the first day of competition. It'll be right around there. Beautiful pirouetting skill, landing exactly in the handstand position. Very nice work. The only criticism, watch this now, she changes her hands, turns her body around in the air, and does two releases in a row. That is her signature, and really, that's what won her a gold medal. And she nails it, and gets even better than she did in qualifying. 16.133, back to the Russians and Americans after this. Getting set to watch Anna Dementieva of Russia at the World Championships in Rotterdam. She's only 15. That's got to be spinning a little bit. A little bit, but what she's got going for her, her head coach, Alexander Alexandrov, says that she is a workaholic. He says he wishes he had more gymnasts just like her. Well, that's what it takes. Yeah.
she actually was not slated to compete in the team finals. Afanaseva was. Oh. oh that boy. wasn't supposed to happen either. Wow. Well, that could change the standings. A lot. A lot. Like I was saying, she was not supposed to be this bar worker, but Afanaseva had a disastrous first day. And Alexandrov said, uh, we have no idea what we're going to do. Well, and Anna only scored a 14.2 on the first day. And Russia's been in a team drought, as a matter of fact, since they went from the Soviet Union to Russia. They have not won a team gold in the World Championships or the Olympics. That's right. In almost 20 years. Yep. Rookie mistake. Well, I'll tell you, that is, that is bad news certainly opens up the door for Team USA. And now from the United States, Alicia Sacramoni. Why is she here, Elfie? Why is she still in the sport? She wants a gold medal. She wants a gold medal at the Olympic Games. She is not satisfied from what happened in Beijing. A lot of people pointed fingers at Alicia. Well, it was on this event in Beijing. On that mount. On that mount. She fell and felt like she let the team down. I mean, it was the three up, three count rule. And then on the next, the final event, she fell again on floor exercise. And it was not a great day. It's all, and she says it over and over again. It, she says it's about redemption. And if, and if she hits those two, they win the gold? You know what? They wouldn't have won the gold, but it doesn't you know, matter. When you, what you don't know, though, is you know the mindset of the Chinese at that point in time would have been very different because it would have been you know a lot of pressure as opposed to just make it through. Oh! Wow! And she is not falling again. How did she not fall <laughs> I don't off? Know. Oh. Just the dismount. Does this great. Wow. How did she do that? Uh, yeah, that's... I, I can't believe... I can't believe she was able to stay on the beam getting some talking to from her coach, Mihai Bristian. It is a very small apparatus to find your feet over and over again on. Two of them, <laughs> side by side, like right here. So that oh. leg, it's, I'd submit, it's amazing. It's amazing she didn't come off the beam. It's still going to be, you know, a pretty good deduction. But certainly a veteran type person to pull that off, to not come off. An odd thing to press your lips up against the balance beam. Yeah. But this was wonderful. Big highlight of the routine. However, the step back. Again, you're looking for room to improve. It's right here. Not happy, obviously. There'll be other chances in this World Championships. Come on, Bags. Let's go, Bags. Come on, Bags. She has actually qualified to the vaulting finals, where I think she could win. Now, Aliyah Mostafina. So let's look at those angles. That one, excellent. Beautiful transition.
combination so great. Right into that stalder. 16 years old, first world championships. Oh. And that's hers, by the way. They submitted that skill to be evaluated. It's been done on the men's side, but never seen it on the women's. Team USA has to absorb a 14.6 from Alicia Sacrimony. You know, you watch most of Fina, you don't need to know the name of any of the moves. You know good is good when it's good. That's for sure. And now uh, Rebecca Bross of the United States in Plano, Texas. Mostafina gets a 15.6. The Russians needed that. And this could be a huge score for Rebecca as well. She is very focused on balance beam and has the skills to back it up right here. And this one right here, yeah. An Arabian. Oh, oh, oh. Very uncharacteristic. Wow. Very. Boy, I don't know how many steps she took there, but that... Looked like three tiny ones. Remember, she is a little bit beat up. She hasn't done anywhere near the numbers that she typically does because of a shin that has been bothering her. And that must be hard for her because she is an athlete that loves doing numbers in the gym. That's what defines her. She does it over and over again until it's perfect. Mount at times has struggled. Great today. That time Mihai had very little to say. <laughs> well, it's not not his gymnast, you know. Meanwhile, guys, moments ago, the Russian situation became more complicated. This is Tatiana Nebieva on the uneven bars. And she's actually great on the uneven bars, but she gets a little bit off there. And then this is unthinkable. She jumps down. Yeah, crazy that she doesn't have the backup plan when her body position is out of line. She, she just lost it. Yeah. How, how could she have saved that, Tim? Oh, she could have just continued. She actually made a mistake right before it and covered it up. She needed to do the exact same cover. That's a point, one point off. And remember, Russia's already counting a fall. So in your world, that's a mental mistake. Oh, that was a complete mental error. Yeah, without question. And she's gonna remember not just the error, but not following through. She's gonna have nightmares about that. Well, and Tim, she probably has never experienced that before because that's the inexperience of not having a backup plan. How about the condition of her brain knowing she let her team down? They've already absorbed one fall. Yeah, it's it, disastrous, really. Such a shame when there was all this greatness. Well, this is going to dramatically change things. We'll see how much when we come back to the 2010 World Gymnastics Championships. There's been a power shift in the women's team final. Two Russia falls have knocked them down to third. China's in the lead, and the United States moves up into the silver medal position. And now on the floor, a second chance for Maddie Larson of the United States. Her stumble could have cost the U.S. in the night of qualifying, but they still did qualify here for the finals, and now she's got a clean slate.
Well, that, that's a problem. She was supposed to connect that into another Salto. It's a requirement. Mistake, one much more subtle but equally damaging. Oh, unbelievable. Oh. That that one that happened prior, she needs to do two saltos connected, and she doesn't have a requirement. That that'll cost her five tenths of a point. And then that landing right there, that's a point off 1.5. That is devastating. Devastating. Wow. And Tim, Marta Caroli has to be watching, saying only one thing to herself. That can't happen in an Olympics. With, without question. Yeah, she'll do everything in her power to not allow something like that to happen at an Olympic Games. You could see it in Maddie's face as soon as she landed. She was shocked. You could see her eyes shift over to the coaching staff. This is going to be a, a very, very low number. And you know, it's, she's the national champion on floor exercise. Yeah, we said at Nationals that this is a routine and this type of athlete with her style, it would play very well on the stage and it just not, has not unfolded that way for Maddie. Wow. Now, while that was happening on floor, this was happening on beam for Senia Semenova of Russia. They've got to gain some ground back. Senia is actually a world champion herself on the uneven bars. Didn't even compete for Russia today on uneven bars. In fact, this is her only event. Well, I cannot believe the mistakes that have been going on in this World Championships. It's amazing. Since music start up in the background, it's it's a weird time warp. It's almost as if she's getting another chance. She probably wishes she could have another one. <laughs> she's moving on this apparatus so Tim it's just it's so uninspiring like it's just there's not a lot of passion in this routine but she got through yeah. without a fall and today that means a lot mm. Jeez. she's going to have her 18th birthday on the road there in Rotterdam all of those little Wobbles here and there certainly add up at this level of competition, as do the steps on the landings. Semenova, 14.3. Russia sliding behind the United States. And now Aliyah Mustafina. And she is their rock. She has qualified first into the all-around and also qualified on all four individual apparatus events. Beautiful double turn to start things off. And you know, Tim, she was she's very smart because people were congratulating Russia after the first day of competition. And she said, hold on. Great. In there. She said, we haven't won anything yet. Yeah, she was actually kind of critical of her teammates. <laughs> of her teammates saying there were some mistakes. I'm not going to name names, but. She said, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, she hasn't. So far, she hasn't at all. So she has a little Svetlana Horkina yeah, in her. She does, a lot. Yeah. A lot. She'd love to wind up like Horkina did in 03 with a world championship gold medal in the all around. Mm. No. 
You know, you just can't teach this type of mindset to an athlete of her caliber. I mean, Alexander Alexandrov has done wonders with this team, but I tell you what, she she has the right stuff to make it happen. She is tough. Uh, big Rebecca Bo Ross fans might have heard her music start in the background. We'll be showing you her floor routine. Triple twist, you see a little bit leg separation. Meanwhile, Aliyah Mustafina gets a 15.033. Well, we'll see Rebecca Bross for Team USA. They had the two-fall opportunity of the Russians. Now this major break for Maddie Larson. This is what veteran leaders are for. We'll see if Rebecca Bross can pick her up with her performance on floor next. Blue skies in Rotterdam, but we're inside at the 2010 Gymnastics World Championships watching the women's team final. And Rebecca Bross of the United States on the floor. And this is the apparatus that really is pounding on that injured shin. She left a element out in qualifying. We'll see if she does it today. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey, Elfie, there's a good chance she'll be performing if she does go to the Olympics with this music. It makes me think that you better pick the right song. You're going to hear it about 10,000 times. Oh, yeah. Well, more importantly, the right type of music that reflects the personality and something that she's really able to express herself in. You know, Rebecca doesn't pour on the smiles in any of her gymnastics, only if it's a successful routine. And this, I believe, her last tumbling run, and that pass right there is what kind of lost her the world all-around title last year. And that she did not do in the qualifying. She left out that last acrobatic element. She added it in today. Looked great. 14.633, the United States trying to hold off the Russians. And now our first look at Alexandra Raceman of the United States. She, of course, is a teammate of Alicia Sacramoni. Has a lot of the same qualities that Alicia does. Very powerful. So she excels on floor exercise and on, on vaulting. And she's been on for this U.S. team. She has been very focused here at the World Championships, has hit like a veteran. She's, she's completely unfazed. That, that's, what I, that's what I get from her. It's nothing rattles her. She's calm. And, you know, I tell you what, that... I don't know if you can teach that. I, I don't believe you can teach it to the level that someone like her achieves. She just can deal with it and be great at the big moment. Well, she did say that working alongside with Alicia Sacramoni, that Alicia's always told her, just don't freak out whatever you do.
Are you getting dizzy? <laughs> Solid performance from Raceman, I tell you. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Doing the job. Elfie, do you constantly play the game when you watch this to try and guess if you're watching someone who'll be at the Olympics? We do. I do. And I'm thinking that this young lady has done herself a lot of favors here at the World Championships. Marta likes athletes who can compete. She qualified right behind Rebecca Bross in the all-around in the third spot. It's all about handling the pressure. This is the team final. We've got the all-around and event finals as well. Russia and the United States first to the end of the third rotation. China and Romania soon to be there. The World Championships continue in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, Anna Pargras of Romania on the floor. China will be on the beam. And this will be a treat. You'll feel like you're at a ballet watching this performance. Romania is doing a nice job today, but I think they're going to really be struggling to figure into the medals. But about 25 years ago, 1987, in this very same arena, they defeated the Soviet Union and had the all-around champion. Looking for a little of that uh, maybe luck to shine upon them, but... But Anna can take them places, and this is an athlete who has all the artistry. She was beautiful on floor, just need to work on the difficulty. It's coming. 14.133, Alexandra Raceman got a solid 14.5 on the floor, and now the China story unfolds on the beam. And Dang Ling Lin. This could be awesome. She's a world champion. She was on the Olympic team, so she's got the two big ones world champ olympic champ and she is fabulous on balance beams she packs a lot in this routine doesn't she tim yes i don't know how she gets it in there but skill after skill done with such great poise
Scored a 15.1 in the qualification competition. Easy mount, but watch out. Yeah. She tumbles on the beam like nobody's business. Watch this. She doesn't even use the whole length of the beam either. Yeah, it's skills like that, the full turn, right up on her toes, holding the element. She's done this routine a few times. <laughs> Dismount. Wow. Alfie, you actually said easy mount. Yeah, she just stepped up on the beam. Is there such a thing, though? <laughs> there is. Yeah. You know what? There are athletes out there that will take some risk, but she figures she has enough risk in the routine. She's, she's got plenty. She doesn't need to worry about the mount. Just get up on the, the balance beam and get the job started. Beautiful dismount. She was actually one of the two. Hukashin, the other one with a 14.7 there, a good number. One of the two that people were talking about being underaged at the Beijing Olympic Games. Diana Chilaro of Romania. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> There's a lot of tumbling in this exercise. Very powerful. But not a lot of... No, not a lot of artistry, yeah. and that's <laughs> what's lacking. It's got to be that balance. You know, she picked catchy music. You got to hand it to her. The audience loves that sort of thing. The important thing, she hit. She's going to feel successful. That's exactly what Bellu wants this team to feel. Without a doubt, but the artistic component much more important at this point in time, and, and she will definitely not do well in that area. Sri Lu of China, they're trying to hold on to their first place position. Chilaru got a 14.733. Oh. Another fall. Wow. 
she's their national champion, by the way. Great skill. I've already said it, but I, I tell you that they just keep falling and it is so unusual to have this many falls at this level of competition. when you fall off right at the beginning. <laughs> it's like, just get me off this thing. You know, the rest has been okay. There was a misconnection shortly after that fall, but, you know, national champion or not, this doesn't help. Yeah. China's going to lose a big chunk of their lead. Question is, do they lose the lead altogether? But Tim, you used to have a phrase, China syndrome. They got rid of that for their own Olympics, but... Yeah, <laughs> it, it might just uh, eke its way back into the vocabulary. Because they did not have it at all in Beijing, I'll tell you. Grabs the beam. And the interesting question is, do they call that almost two falls because she grabs the beam which is a yeah. five tenth deduction that would be and then so, jumps so off harsh, which is a point it? yeah i don't think they do but su lu gets a 13.0 we'll do the math as we head to the final rotation for gold silver and bronze the best female gymnasts in the world move to the fourth rotation in the women's team final china in front russia has moved in front of the united states and right now, the United States is in third. We pick it up on the floor exercise, Huang Kusheng. And remember, she had that error on the uneven bars. Oh, she is out of bounds. That'll be an extra tenth of a point. Well, the coaching staff says that she's probably the most talented all-arounder that they have on this team. But, you know, the, the, she really captivated me in the exercise. The choreography was great. I love the way she moves, but there are definite mistakes in the landings right out of those tumbling passes. Yeah, I would say it was just barely good. This was nice, but you see that step forward? That's either a one or a three-tenth plus the one-tenth out of bounds. This is not going to get a big number. And it does not. 14 even. Now our first look at Raluca Haidu, 15 years old. And you see that D number right there, 5.8, that indicates the value of this vault. If she does it perfectly, out of a 10.0, the maximum is 15.8. 
And not bad, actually. Not bad. You sound surprised. Uh, she, well, she's very little, <laughs> you know, and it's hard to generate enough power on the board to get the spring that you need to do this vault. The final rotation will continue in Rotterdam after this. And this now is the final Chinese gymnast. And the Yu Yuan. gymnast for China on the floor, Tian Yu She, of course, was on that 2008 gold medal winning team. And one of the favorites of the competition. I mean, she just lit up the floor. She's so much fun to watch. Great personality. Yeah, she really shows it off. It's like a performance here. there were some errors in that exercise and you know you, you, you got to remember that the USA and Russia still to come they just the Chinese just haven't looked as sharp nowhere near as sharp as they did in the 2008 Olympic Games they look different and again problems with the endings of these tumbling passes I mean this one showed great difficulty but it's hard to believe those small tiny hops I mean they just add up throughout the routine but I have to say Tim it is so great to see her back in action she looks great I think she's making a go for 2012 well Tim you were right as usual 14.5 very similar to her teammate score it sets the bar now they're going to win a medal here in Rotterdam still to come the United States and Russia will decide what color it will be Time for the final statements by the Americans and the Russians. Mackenzie Kakwato on the vault. Mackenzie also competed for the U.S. She was first up on uneven bars, did her job there at the start of this competition, and she ends her day as the leadoff for this event. Powerful vaulter. Going to do that Yurchenko double twist. On the belt. And a nice job. Pretty dead center on the landing. Tim, she was just shy of 15 first, in the first day of competition. And we'll await that score. Anna Dementieva of Russia set to go on the floor. She's the workhorse, right? Yes, she is, yeah. actually said he wished he had more gymnasts. There aren't many like her in Russia now.
Year Senior First World Championships. What I liked about her, she always had a smile on her face. It didn't matter what happened in the routine. Yeah, that was a solid one for Russia. And the United States trying to sneak past Russia here. I don't mean sneak past. It's obvious what they're doing. Alexander Raceman on the vault. Coquato got a 15. That was great. Yeah, great vault. Great vault. Very clean. Powerful. Small little hop. And Tieva, 14.533. That could be a little vulnerable. The United States on vault. Yeah, it, it could be, but also relative to China, it's tracking higher than, than the Chinese. Raceman score of 15.066. Here's Alicia Sacramoni. And this can be one of the highest scores of the day. Alicia scored 15.466 in the first day. Next game is for it to be Leon Carvalho. She's always been known for her power, but few would have thought that she would come back and be even better on vaulting than she used to be, and, and she is. She does a very different vault from what we've been seeing. She'll attack the horse straight on, a handspring style vault. Fantastic. Big step on the landing, but fantastic. Did she hurt something, Tim? She grabbed her elbow right yeah. away, didn't she? Yes, yeah, she did. Look at the power. Wow. Just sends that way up there. She really does. And now, Senia Afanyaseva. And she was basically written off by a lot of people, but has had a resurgence. And this is her only event that she's contributing on. What kind of a score do you think that's going to get? Probably close to 15. All right, if that happens, that means Russia could be in a position to win the first ever World or Olympic team gold medal competing as Russia. Sacramoni, huge, 15.6. She's got an ice bag on that right elbow. And there's still a lot of gymnastics to come in this World Championships. Yes, there is. Well, for, for Alicia, well... Definitely vault. She may actually be on balance beam as well. And the score is near 15, but slightly less, 14.8. But a good score, a very good score. And the United States just waiting. They want to know what kind of medal are we going to win. It comes down to this. Mustafina needs a 14.466 or better to win Russia's first ever team goal. And that should be no problem. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful.
Has to step out of bounds oh, yeah. there, though, Al. Oh, yeah. But I'd, I'd be shocked if that doesn't get the job done. So you think the diva did it? I, I, oh, yeah. I think she, she did it. She is beautiful. And there he is, Alexander Alexandrov. Many years in the United States coaching. Was called back home. Accepted the job and... I'll tell you. He's done a great job with I this think, team. I think history is happening right here for Russia. The Soviet Union was one thing. They were as dominant as any team in any sport can be. But Russia found the going different. Last time this event was held, the United States celebrated a gold medal. You can see the anticipation on their faces. No sure thing until the numbers are up. No, that's that's true, but... And that is a close bond right there. It's gold for Russia. And she just made it. Two tenths. That's a couple of those little bobbles you and Elfie talk about all the time. China is going to win the bronze. So it's Russia, the United States for Silva, and China finishes in third. Romania on the outside of that, looking in. When we come back, we'll put all this in perspective and give you a glimpse of what to expect tomorrow here on NBC. The women's all-around final and our highlight coverage of the men's all-around and men's team final after this. Well, we still have a lot more gymnastics to come beginning at 2 Eastern time tomorrow on NBC. It's the women's all-around, the men's team final, and the men's all-around highlights. But so far, Tim, would the word sloppy be applicable? Unbelievable. Uh, I can never remember a world championship where the athletes performed Honestly, so poorly. It, it was so many falls. Elfie, does it have something to do with where we are on the gymnastics calendar? Absolutely. And what it proved to me is this year was really a wash. Um, next year, 2011, which is always the qualification to the Olympic Games, y you know what? Once again, that's the event that will count. There are still so many athletes uh, that were not here in Rotterdam that I'm sure will be on that calendar for next year's uh, championships. Now, Tim, every gymnast has a just-missed situation, but how is this women's U.S. team feeling about not getting a gold by two-tenths of a point? Yeah, it's heartbreaking. You know, I mean, it's uh, to come so close to that. And uh, actually, I don't think they imagined that the Russian team was going to be the ones that came away with it. Personally, I thought that if everybody hit in the entire competition, that Russia was going to win the title. Elsa, we talked during the competition about every time you watch an event like this, you're trying to figure out in your mind, who's going to make it to the Olympics? Who's not going to make it to the Olympics? Tell me about that and, and play the numbers game for us. Well, I think uh, this year, you know, you look at the teams, uh, Russia, uh, China, and the United States, of course, and it, it, like I said before, there's still some juniors that are waiting in the wings. They're, for they're, all countries. For yes. all countries. It's not just those three and I, I think the whole look of the world championships next year are going to be completely different I think it will still be these top teams that will be fighting for the uh, the all-around win but uh, there are st some strong athletes out there waiting to make their move okay Tim tomorrow we have the women's all-around it's going to be pretty interesting to watch how many women think they can win this all-around gold medal <laughs> Two. That's it. <laughs> Who are they? I think Rebecca Bross and Alia Mustafina. How did they look in this event and, and set up what you think is going to happen? Fantastic. Well, they qualified in in the first day of competition, first and second in the all-around. And, you know, once again, I said that if Russia went and did everything that they could, they were going to win the team championship. If uh, Mustafina does everything she can, I don't think Rebecca can handle it. You feel that way too? Well, absolutely. And what I wanted to add further to that is uh, Mustafina and Rebecca Bross. I mean, between those two athletes, neither one of them are afraid to win. That is the difference. You cannot teach that. You watch those two women out on the floor and you just see that fire in their eyes. They want it. But you know, Al, the other interesting thing is Rebecca Bross has already been second once in a world championships and she sees her name right below you know it, that's that's hard to take it, to go second twice okay this is as we always know it's a very harsh sport maddie larson did she hurt her olympic chances in this event yeah i would say it would be very very difficult for maddie and and the thing is it's not so much the physical aspect it's the emotional damage uh that 
that she's going to bear because, you know, I mean, the USA, they had it. They had it. Quickly, in the men's competition, what countries are we talking about? Well, in 2008, the Chinese gymnast beat the Japanese by over seven points. That is unbelievable. They, they were just so dominant. They're not that great right now. Japan is right there and easily could challenge. And you got teams like the United States, Germany, and even Great Britain doing very, very well. Okay, so Russia wins its first ever individual gold as Russia in the women's team final. Join us tomorrow for the women's all-around and highlights of the men's team final and the men's all-around as well, beginning at 2 Eastern time on NBC. With Tim Dagan and Elfie Schlegel, I'm Al Troutwig. We'll see you then.